Elmina Castle. Within these walls, roughly 30,000 men, women, and children would be sold by the 18th century. Here in this living hell, men and women of great power and status were broken by the crack of a whip and the bark of a hound. Such was the nature of a slave fortress in these times. Its walls not only housed slaves, but crushed their very souls. Its gates sent them into the great unknown, never to be seen again. Now to anyone of our day and age, such a place would seem inhumane, unprecedented. But to the wealthy people of these times, Elmina was a fortress of possibility and a festival for smiling merchants and traders. Two of which we will be looking at today. Kwaku and Daku are their names. Brothers and sons of a wealthy slave owner living near the castle. Every day the two sons would go up to the fortress and observe which slaves were up for sale or which new captives were brought in as if they were dogs waiting in a shelter. But today though, on their way back from their little excursion to the castle, they would learn that their parents had a huge announcement to make. While walking home, the two discussed what it might be but could not place their finger on it. When they got home, one of the guards ushered them to their parents' chamber. There, it would be revealed that Kwaku was now arranged to marry a young girl of another rich family. The only issue would be her age, for she was not yet old enough to be wed to Kwaku. While his father was very happy and told him to be patient and wait, his mother, knowing the type of man Kwaku was, told him to stay ever faithful. This would be advice that Kwaku did not adhere, for he would take on many, many lovers as time passed. Amongst these lovers was a young girl named Adai. Adai and Kwaku had such a special bond that Adai believed there was just simply no way that he would marry another. But when the time came, Kwaku left her alone. Enraged and furious by this betrayal, Adai called for all her siblings, her brothers, her sisters, and all of their clan members to help her bring down her former lover. The next day, while Kwaku was out buying gifts for his new bride, Adai and her clan snuck up and captured him, and in the process killed Daku, who tried to defend his brother. Now alone, beaten, and starved in a cell, Kwaku sat waiting to be sold to the highest bidder. In time, he would be sent to the West Indies where he would serve his new masters very well. And that is the tale of Kwaku and Daku.